Well, I hope you all had uh, a good wits and break. This is our second question and answer session. I'm very pleased that many residents have engaged with the council and submitted their questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. And of course, in due course, these will be uploaded on the council website and you will be able to see them for yourself. So the first question is from Richard. And in fact, we also have a written question from Kevin and Andy on the same subject. Hi, my name is Richard. I live in the West Hill Ward uh, of Wandsworth Council. Um, I'm the COO of a company called Under the Doormat. Um, and I'm looking at how I can get my team back to work in the office in a safe way. And one of the big things that has been encouraged by central government, of course, is not to use public transport. So we have a scheme for the Cycle to Work scheme. But my concern is that a lot of our employees aren't super confident cyclists and there are large parts of Wandsworth which aren't actually very welcoming to cycling. You know, the A3, the giant gyratory. Um, I'd like to ask what the council is doing that will meaningfully provide safe ways for cyclists, all types of cyclists, the less confident children, um, to make it more accessible for all of them to cycle to work in a safe way so that they don't have to use public transport. So the question about cycling and walking, yes, of course, we want to do all we can to help our residents observe the social distancing guidelines. And there are many places in the borough where this is difficult. And so we are looking at where we can widen the pavements. And, and those are primarily in places like town centres. We're also looking at ways in which we can introduce a one-way walking strategy, but of course that will be dependent on residents observing the one-way walking strategy. We want to look at making the bus lanes 24-7 so that cyclists can benefit from that kind of traffic-free bus lanes along the roads. One of those important things for us is that our key town centres of Ballam and Tooting are on a red route, and so we are engaging with the mayor to make sure that he introduces safe cycling measures all the way from Clapham South right the way to Collier's Wood so that it is safe for cyclists but also particularly for workers going to St George's Hospital. And finally, we have declared all our roads uh, 20 miles an hour. So most of them already were in, on June the 9th, the rest of them will become 20 miles an hour roads. But of course, the big roads in Wandsworth, South Circular, Trinity Road, the A24, which is Ballam High Road, Tooting High Street, are all TFL roads. And so we are lobbying the mayor and TFL to make them 20 miles an hour. So the entire package of measures should make cycling and walking in this borough both safer and capable of helping people observe social distance guidelines. So this is another question from Richard of Battersea, and it is about Wandsworth Bridge, about when will the works of Wandsworth Bridge commence? Well, the short answer is, we hope to do this in July. The reason why the works have been delayed is because at present, Port of London Authority and Thames Tideway Tunnel Works have prior use of the river and therefore access to the arches under the river. So once that prior use is over, which we hope to be in July, we shall start those works. Hi, my name's Molly and I live in Southfields. Um, my question is twofold. This is my guide dog, Noah. Um, one is about him and one is about me. Um, firstly, about him, um, I know parks, because of social distancing, um, uh, parks have been um, had rules that dogs need to be kept on a lead. And I wondered if that's going to change now that the new government guidelines say that um, provided your dog can um, has good recall and can safely be left off the lead, um, they should be allowed to do so. Um, and, you know, because obviously Noah's was very desperate for a run around. Um, and the second question is to do with um, grocery deliveries. Um, I think blind and partially sighted people um, have not been able to be registered as vulnerable um, for that specifically, which has meant that many people are not able to get food delivered, including myself. Um, and I just wondered if there would be any possibility of you or one of your colleagues lobbying local supermarkets um, in Wandsworth um, to <laughs> make exceptions and, and help blind and partially sighted people um, get groceries. 
groceries in this difficult time. I've had several other people write to me in the past about dogs on leads. And I know it's been an irritation for dog owners to be told how to exercise their dogs. Most dog owners and dogs are actually very good, but there are, of course, some who are not. And then there are times when dogs get extremely excited and they become difficult to handle. So government guidelines was to all councils and all owners of open spaces that dogs should be kept on leads during the lockdown. And that's what we are following. Now, I think that as soon as there are relaxations, we want to review this and make it possible for dog owners to exercise their dogs in a responsible way, but actually in the way they have always done it, you know, with love and attention for their dog as well as other park users. So we hope we'll get back to, to those days soon. So Molly, you ask about, about, as a partially visually sighted person, whether you can join the shielded list. Well, this is, the shielded list is put together by the government, but we have tried to in lobby them to make sure that partially sighted people can be included on that list. So far without success. But in the meantime, what we have done is to try and make sure that our community hub is aware of the needs of partially sighted people. And we are linking them up wherever possible with the NHS volunteers and the Good Sam uh, uh, scheme so that some assistance is provided. I hope you have been helped, and if not, by all means, please get back in touch with Community Hub again. Nina and Scott ask, when will the schools reopen? Well, the first thing to remember is that schools, many schools, have been open all the time. They've been open to children of key workers. And here I want to say thank you to head teachers and teachers for educating the children of key workers so that key workers are free to do the real task of helping people through this crisis. So thank you very much for that. Just turning to the government expectation that schools should open on the 1st of June. So we are working very hard to enable head teachers to do just that. And we want to firstly open schools to primary school pupils and in time to secondary school pupils in years 10 and 12. Whilst following the Department of Education's guidelines, one thing is very clear to me and my colleagues at Wandsworth. You cannot treat all schools as one size fits all. And secondly, it's also clear to me that the people who actually know the schools best are the head teachers. They, school, they know their schools far, far better than we at the town hall do. So we are taking the view trust the head teachers, both about opening the schools and actually being satisfied that the right measures are in place so that the schools can open safely. I know many parents will be concerned about whether their children will be safe in the schools when the schools reopen. So I want to assure parents that we have taken this step of opening schools with the greatest of e-care. We are working with our Director of Public Health, uh, Shannon Katia, to make sure that there is a rigorous hygiene regime in the schools. That all schools are aware of the need to wash hands frequently and have the facilities to do so. On top of that, we want to make sure that all schools have sort of safe pick-up and drop-off points so that children can be picked up from schools without any exposing them to dangers. We are working with London Resilience Centre to access adequate supplies of personal protective equipment for those schools where that would be needed. And let me assure you that every school that needs PPE will be supplied with PPE so that both teachers and pupils are safe in those schools. And finally, we are making available to schools, at no cost to schools, both the use of open spaces and other council buildings so that children can be spread out in a socially distant way and safely. Let me make this final point clear. We want schools to reopen so that the children's education is no longer interrupted. But we want to do that safely and we want to do it in a way that gives confidence to pupils, parents and teachers. So Claire's asking, is free parking going to continue? 
I'm sorry, Claire. Parking enforcement started from Monday the 25th of May after a period of no enforcement. We have worked with London boroughs to make sure that there is a consistent parking enforcement activation across the capital so that people are very clear that it isn't one borough and not the other. However, one thing is very clear in Wandsworth, which is that the concession of free parking available to NHS workers and social care workers will continue. They continue to have access to free parking. Everybody else needs to bear in mind that enforcement has started from the 25th of May. During the lockdown, we had very limited enforcement. It was primarily where vehicles were parked badly or dangerously and impeding the progress of ambulances and other emergency vehicles. There will also be people in the borough who do not have the right parking permit because either they didn't need it or it has expired. My advice to all residents is please check that you have the right parking permit and if you don't, please take necessary steps to either buy the right permit or to obtain the concession you feel you're entitled to. I don't want anyone to receive a parking ticket needlessly, so I'm urging you all to take the right steps to make sure you have the parking permit you need. When will libraries open again? Paul, we took the decision to close all libraries in response to government instructions. And similarly, we are waiting for government advice on when we can reopen the libraries. One thing I want to say is that when we can reopen the libraries, they will feel different because we will have to take all the precautions to make sure that they comply with the latest guidelines on social distancing and safe use of libraries. But let me assure you, we will do that and so the libraries can once again be the hearts of our communities. But what is interesting though, whilst libraries have been shut, they have actually not been non-functional. So we have had a remarkable increase in people use accessing the library service, buying, making e-borrowing. So let me just give you some figures. So we have had, we've delivered 5,745 items to vulnerable residents. So this is housebound and vulnerable residents getting library service as before. And then other ones of the residents have borrowed 14,309 e-books or audio titles. And we have had story times which have been viewed 38,642 times. So libraries buildings may have been shut, but the library service is alive and well and has been very well used by ones of the residents. So Xavier asks an interesting question about planning. So let me read out his question to you. So Xavier writes, we're wondering if council is thinking about easing a bit the rules of planning permission for people like us who don't have access to outside space at home and we are on a higher risk group. We have plans for applying to open a roof terrace on our flat in the near future. Xavier, I understand entirely why you want to consider having a roof terrace and of course we would want to make sure that when you apply you have the right guidance. So first thing is please engage with the planning service and have a pre-planning consultation with the planning officer about what you can do, how you can do and what would be the necessary precautions you need to take so that your roof terrace both complies with planning policy but also is seen as neighbourly development without actually impacting badly on your neighbour's outlook. So that will be the test for us. Please engage with us, take our guidance and when you do apply for planning uh, for your roof terrace, I wish you luck. Hello Ravi, my name is Paul Tibbles and I'm from Nightingale Ward. Happy Mental Health Awareness Week. As part of this week, I wanted to ask you to what extent Wandsworth are providing support and help for carers in residential homes for older people to deal with the 
stress and the trauma of working on a day-to-day basis with older people who who have either got COVID-19 or are potential victims of COVID-19. And I wanted one little bit extra question to that, which was to what extent Wandsworth are planning to support the psychological well-being of these staff in the longer term. Thank you. Paul, thank you very much for reminding me that last week was a Mental Health Awareness Week. It's an important way of drawing attention to this important service. Turning to what we are doing to support care workers, particularly at this very difficult time, we have a regular telephone conversation with each of the care homes to understand what is happening in them and what are their needs. And part of that is, of course, to assess the mental health needs of the care workers. And for that, we have a website which they can access. But if there is more needed, we are obviously always open to providing additional support. Very important that people in the front line feel supported not only with things like PPE, but things for their mental well-being both whilst they are at work, but also on their downtime. Important issue for us, and the only way we can help is by making that regular engagement, and that regular engagement will alert us to the needs, and we stand ready to meet those needs. Louis from Ellsville asks, what help is in place for vulnerable adults? Louis, I want to show you that we continue to provide a full range of services to meet residents' eligible social care needs. This council has a good track record. Every year, 3,900 adults are supported, as well as 600 carers. We respond to 2,100 safeguarding concerns. Now, this is the scale of annual workload, and we continue to discharge that. We're committed to supporting Residents remain as independent as possible and helping them do so in their homes. We work with the voluntary sector as our partners in discharging some of this work. Now turning to the COVID-19 emergency, we have taken a number of steps to make sure that vulnerable residents of this borough are fully supported. The community hub is our gateway to both accessing, for for residents to access help and for us to access them. Every adult on the shielded list has had a contact with the council or another agency. So we know their needs and we have tried to meet them whenever and wherever possible. And in meeting those needs, the voluntary sector has been a good and a strong ally. Of those, HUK Wandsworth branch has been absolutely wonderful. They have supported hundreds of vulnerable adults with food and medicine and befriending services. So we have a full range of services in place for this time, but I also want to show you that Adult Care Department continues to work as it always has done, supporting thousands of local residents and meeting their social care needs. Hi, my name's John uh, and I'm from Earlsfield. Uh, My question is around when registry services will reopen uh, at the town hall and um, particularly for registration of births and the thousands of new parents in the borough who've had babies over the last couple of months i know that st george's in tooting is one of the busiest hospitals in the country uh, so concerned as to when that might reopen to register births uh, and ensure that the uh, council are not overwhelmed at the time that uh, they do thank you you know, birth of a child is a, is, a, is a joyful moment in a family and in, in the life of, of a parent. And of course, registration is one of those necessary bits of bureaucracy that we all have to do. And the sooner you do it and the quicker you do it and the easier way you do it, the, the, the better and quicker you return to the affection and love of your child. I'm sorry that during this pandemic, uh, government guidance has said that that has to stop because registration of birth is a face-to-face activity and all face-to-face activities have been sort of deemed to be not necessary at the moment. So, 
quick question, a quick answer to the quick question about will there be more appointments? Yes, as soon as we are able to resume services, we want to make sure that the registration service is up and running and not only up and running, but catching up the back with the backlog. Whilst we're talking about registration services, of course, the other bit of the registration service is registration of weddings. And again, that has not been uh, possible, but we have now heard that the government guidelines say that from the 1st of June, small weddings can happen in a safe way. So we are working to make sure the registration offices are kitted out for safe celebration of weddings. And I think the small weddings are defined at the moment as a couple plus the two witnesses. But once those things are clear, details will emerge on the council website. Good morning, I'm Marilee Carr of the West Hill constituency in Wandsworth. I'm the CEO and founder of Under the Doormat and we are a hospitality business. Normally we welcome guests into homes when people are away. Obviously we are one of the hardest hit industries. Our, our revenues have dropped by more than 90% um, and we should be eligible for the hospitality grants which have been on offer by central government and which are being uh, administered by local councils. Um, to date now, um, you know, about two Two months into this, we are still trying to get our hospitality grant with no success so far. Um, any support that you can have um, would be much appreciated and we would love to know what else we can do to push that through and ensure that that very vital contribution to our business is there so that we continue to offer jobs um, and, a, and a wonderful service as the industry starts to recover. Meli, with regard to your question, Regrettably, your business does not qualify for the Retail Hospitality and Leisure Grant. See, the government set out the definitions of which kind of business can access the grant under this heading. And unfortunately, your business does not meet the government definition. And furthermore, Council had very limited discretion in deviating from the government definitions. But you know, I do understand the frustration you feel and all the other businesses that are excluded from the government support, we do very much understand the frustration. And so what we've been doing wherever possible is to take every opportunity of lobbying the Chancellor and other bits of government to look into those cases of people who are falling through the cracks of what is otherwise an extremely generous government support for businesses. So I assure you, once that's doing this lobbying on its own and in partnership with other councils and other bodies at every opportunity. But as far as your business is concerned, Marily, I am once again very sorry that you do not qualify. Hello, Councillor. My name is Daniel. I own an Argentinian restaurant in Broadway Market, Tooting. And like many other businesses that trade in markets, we were not eligible to apply for the previous small business grant scheme uh, because it was linked to business rates. A, a few weeks ago, government announced a new discretionary fund to accommodate certain small businesses like regular market traders. Uh, I found on your website that uh, the council is waiting to receive full details from the government, but the guidance from government has just been published uh, last week. Um, so when do you think we will be able to apply for these uh, new grants? Uh, on the other hand, there's a little of concern about the small amount that uh, once World Council was allocated for this new grant scheme. Um, do you think it would be possible to um, flexibilize in the future that 5% allocation cap uh, or um, could be used some of the unspent funds from the previous grant for this new one? Thank you. Yes, of course. The Council has made funds available for range of businesses that includes market traders and so technically yes market traders are eligible to bid for that funds. But what has actually happened is that our allocation in ones of this 2.9 million 
which is not an awful lot of money for what is a large number of businesses in, the, in this category. So the government has now come up with certain guidelines about how to distribute these funds and the council is working on defining its priorities, how to spread the £2.9 million across all the remaining businesses that might qualify under this scheme. This is going to be a difficult job for us to do and I can absolutely say now that when those definitions are worked out and priorities are communicated, these tough decisions will mean that there will be some businesses that will lose out. But, of course, one thing that I have done and my colleagues in the Council continue to do is to ask the Chancellor and the Business Secretary to relook at this allocation and firstly to increase the amount available given the scale of need but also to perhaps give us the flexibility of using the underspend monies in the other business grants that we've been given. So again Daniel I know you asked that specific question so the answer is yes we continue to lobby but as yet I am not able to report any success on our lobbying. So that brings us to the end of this question and answer session. Uh, thank you once again to everyone who submitted their questions. I hope that these answers are helpful, but of course the Council and me are available for continued dialogue on this and other matters. Have a good rest of the day.